वेलकम बैक टू द डिसीजन ट्री मॉड्यूल इन द प्रीवियस वीडियो वी लर्न अबाउट जीनी इम्प्योरिटी विच वी यूज टू डिसाइड द प्योरिटी ऑफ नोड्स देर इज वन मोर एल्गोरिदम विच वी कैन यूज टू डिसाइड द बेस्ट स्प्लिट इन डिसीजन ट्रीज एंड दैट एल्गोरिदम इज काई स्क्वायर काई स्क्वायर मेजर्स द स्टैटिस्टिकल सिग्निफिकेंस ऑफ द डिफरेंसेज बिटवीन द चाइल्ड नोड्स एंड द पेरेंट नोड्स it is measured as the sum of squared standardized differences between observed and expected frequencies of target variable for each node and is calculated using the formula that you can see here now let's see how we can calculate the expected values if you recall this is how the split on performance in class look like we've seen this before there are total 20 students and out of those 10 play cricket and 10 do not so of course the percentage of students who do play cricket will be 50% now if we consider the above average node here there are 14 students in it as the percentage of students who play cricket is 50 in the parent node as we discussed the expected number of students who play cricket will of course be 7 and if you look at the actual value it is 8 so now we have both the values expected values and actual values expected was 7 and the actual turns out to be 8 so we can infer that expected value is calculated based on the distribution of the parent node of the same class similarly the expected number of students who do not play cricket will be 7 right i want you to intuitively think about this because remember the percentage of the students who do not play cricket in the parent node is 50% as well and here the actual value turns out to be 6 similarly for the below average node expected play and not play will be 3 whereas the actual values two students play cricket and four do not now we can calculate the chi square using this formula for each child node can you guess what will be the chi square value if the actual and expected values are the same Pause the video for a second and think about it. It's actually pretty simple. It will be zero because both the actual and expected are the same, and the difference will be zero. Now, if both values are the same, we can generate an inference that the distribution of the child node is the same as that of the parent node, and hence we are not improving the purity of the nodes. On the other hand, if the chi-square value is high. it means that the distribution of child nodes is changing with respect to the parent node and we are going in a direction to achieve more pure nodes hence we can say that higher the chi square value more will be the purity of the nodes after a split let's look at some of the properties of chi square before understanding how it actually works chi square just like gini impurity works only with categorical variables so we cannot use it for continuous targets and of course higher the value of chi square means that the sub nodes are more different from the parent node and hence the homogeneity is more these are some of the properties of chi square and you must consider these properties before choosing the right algorithm for deciding the split let's now understand the steps to calculate chi square for a split first we need to calculate the expected values for each class then we calculate the chi square for individual nodes using this formula that we've seen before here actual is what we actually have as the output and expected means what we've already calculated finally we calculate the chi square for split using the sum of chi square of each child node for that split don't worry i'm going to show you an example and this will be extremely clear by the time we're done with it So let's again compare these two splits. One of course was on the performance and the other one was on the class they belong to and we'll compare the chi square statistic. This is the split on performance in class and the actual and expected values as we've already calculated early in this video. Let's now create a table to calculate the chi square values for this split on performance in class. So the actual values for the above average node are as shown here. Eight students who are above average play cricket whereas 6 do not we have seen this before the expected values will be 7 for both yes he or she does play cricket and he or she does not play cricket as again we have discussed before similarly we'll calculate the values for the second node 
which will be the below average node here. So two students below average play cricket and four do not. And as the total students below average are only six, expected values will be three and three for does play and does not play cricket respectively. Next, we will calculate the deviation of actual values from the expected values for both the classes. So eight minus seven will give us one and six minus seven will give minus one. We'll do the same thing for the below average node as well. If you want, you can just pause this video for a second and see how the calculation played out. Finally, we have to calculate the chi-square values. And again, we'll use this formula. We have the actual minus expected values stored as deviations in the table. Remember, these deviations, these are the actual minus expected values. We will square those values, divide by the expected values and take the square root of those values. Simple, straightforward and let's do that. Here we go. So when you plug in the values, the chi-square comes out to be 0 0.38 for the above average node and 0 0.58 for the below average node. Finally, the chi-square for the split on performance in class will be the sum of all these chi-square values, which as you can see here comes out to be 1.92. This is the chi-square value for the split on performance in class. All right. Similarly, we will calculate the chi-square value for the split on the class variable. We'll again calculate the table. Here we've calculated the values of this table. And again, I suggest you calculate these values on your own and check your results with the values that you can see in this table. This will help you to understand how the chi-square process is working. And finally, we'll calculate the chi-square value for the split on class, which, yes, will be the sum of all chi-square values which comes out to be around 5.36. So what do you think we should do next? We will compare the two chi-square values and the population will split on the class variable as we can see here. Remember, we got the same result using Gini index as well. So we've covered two different algorithms so far and the results of both the algorithms have been quite similar. In the next video, we look at one more commonly used algorithm for deciding the best split when we're dealing with categorical target variables. Thank you.